Okay. Um, so, uh, first of all, welcome. Welcome to Editor X. Welcome to this webinar. Um, and this is our first in our series of in focus webinars. And this time we'll be deep diving on our content management system, on our CMS. And what you're going to see is a live walkthrough of how to create, manage, and display dynamic content on your site using uh, database collections, content collections in the back office of the site. Um, so we're going to cover um, a lot of things uh, in this webinar. Um, it's important to note that it's part one. Uh, there'll be a part two. So the things we'll cover today are basically what the CMS is and why you need it, some of the benefits, uh, how to model and display content using the CMS, um, how to create content collections and connect them to repeaters, which is at one of our layouting tools, um, and how to connect user-generated content, uh, like form submissions, uh, into your collections. And also we'll touch on dynamic pages. Um, so it's, there's a lot for us to cover. Um, a few notes before we start, we'll be recording the session. So um, it will be available afterwards because there's going to be a lot for you to take in. Um, I believe Tao will send it out to you and you'll be able to watch it back on our, um, our webinars page at editorx.com slash academy slash webinars. Uh, you'll be able to see it back there. And during the session, uh, Joshua will be working on a real live site during the demo and you can find it live at the learndeck.org. So you can take a look at the finished product. Um, and and uh, again, an important note, this is uh, uh, the first part in a two part series. So if you've tuned into this one, be sure to uh, tune in for the next one. We'll release when that will be soon. Um, and uh, if you haven't done already, please join our forum. Uh, some of you are new to Editor X, some of you uh, not, hopefully lots of you are already there, but we've got product managers there, designers, experts like Joshua, they're all active there answering questions, lots of lively discussions. So do sign up to join the conversation uh, about all things Editor X. So it's editorxcommunity.com. Um, also, if you want to reach the team directly, uh, you can email hi at editorx.com and you'll reach us and to give us feedback, uh, ask questions there as well. Okay, so I think that's enough from me. I'd like to hand you over to, to Joshua, a developer ad advocate for the Editor X uh, CMS. And uh, hey, Joshua, would you like to tell us a little about yourself? Hey, thank you, Maria. And uh, thank you everybody for coming today to our webinar for Editor X and the Content Manager. Uh, so before we get started, uh, I'm going to introduce myself. And here we go, hold on one, one moment. Going to introduce myself. My name is Joshua Alphonse, and I am a full stack developer by trade, um, music producer for fun, and I'm also a developer advocate. Uh, so um, part of my job is to help foster the community uh, around um, some of our development platforms. Um, and also, as um, Maria mentioned, there's lots of resources and lots of ways for, for you guys to get in contact with us. So you can reach out to me on Twitter, um, at Josh Alphonse, or you can also reach out to me on LinkedIn as well. And um, don't forget to check out our Academy X and also the Community X as well, which is the forum that Maria mentioned. So you can go in there and chat about um, release updates, uh, release and updates, community discussions, wish list for what you'd like for Editor X, and also see some showcase projects as well. And uh, right before we uh, dive into some things, um, I want you guys to all to um, you know figure out how uh, to to think about how you want your experience to be and how you want to enhance uh, when you, what you uh, enhance your your experience when using Editor X. So let's move on to our live site here. And this is the Learn Deck. Uh, and the Learn Deck is our website that's not real. It's a mock website. But it's a website that we're going to be going uh, over that's going to show us how to enhance our, 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 our web applications or our websites that we have built using Editor X. So uh, we have a few different things here. We have our different levels and interest. Um, these are all of our different courses that we have available. And remember, these are not real courses. This is not a real site. And we have uh, a few different uh, courses here from UX and mobile, typography, tap targets, uh, product design, UX and UX design tips and UI elements. And then on the bottom, we also do have a section here 
uh, that allows the users that visit the website to list their name, their phone number, and the email, and then it sends to the content manager to schedule a meeting. So it saves inside of a database. And you might be wondering, uh, you're hearing content manager, content manager, and you might be wondering what that is. And the content manager is a tool that provides us the ability to create dynamic content driven sites by without writing a single line of code. So you don't need to be a developer to create these dynamic websites. Uh, so we're going to get to know the content manager a bit more and how to model and display our content that we're saving to these collections. So I'll go over some core concepts um, and some best and some best practices, pra best practices and some benefits behind using the content manager over using static, uh, using uh, creating static websites. So traditionally, before the content manager, when you're creating a Wix site, you'd be creating a static website, and a static website um, doesn't uh, allow for things to change, right? So if I have uh, some content that I have inside of a repeater, for example, and I want to add it, I would have to add it individually to each item or each card. Now with dynamic content driven sites, while well, using the content manager, we'll be able to uh, update and change these, uh, these items inside of our repeaters and any other UI elements dynamically without having to go to each, uh, each item or UI element individually. So some of the benefits of the content manager are uh, it, that it helps enhance your SEO. It saves you lots of time because again, it doesn't require you to code anything to create these, uh, these content driven websites. Um, you won't have to duplicate many pages. So there is that a 100 page limit, but with dynamic pages, it does allow you to create more and more pages without even touching that limit. You'll be able to constantly update your update and design uh, your websites with, uh, without having to affect actually what you've designed on your page. So it's easy for collaboration. So if you have a designer or developer or someone just working on your content manager in general, you guys will all be able to work together without having to interfere with each other's work. So it's great for collaboration. So as we scroll through our live site here, we'll see that there's lots of different elements, but we're gonna dive in how to actually, how to actually use them. But before we get started with the content manager and adding all these different items to our page, we have to start from, from, from scratch. And generally what I like to do, I like to start from outside the editor or even just from a, from a thought. So let's go over here to our content manager. I mean, to Editor X. And what we'll do now is we're going to start off by uh, creating a data model. So a data model helps us organize and structure our content collections um, without having to put anything into play first. So it's kind of like starting from the drawing board. And you generally like to do this before you start jumping into creating these websites or adding the content to the page so you can see the broader picture of things. So it's best to take a step back so you don't make any, any, uh, any mistakes. So it's kind of future-proofing how you want your website and your content to, uh, to flow. So let's start off uh, by creating our data model and we'll do it within the editor itself. So we can see how we build fields um, and what the content manager looks like. So again, the data modeling doesn't necessarily have to be within the editor. You can take a step aside and just draw it out. Uh, whatever you prefer, but I think it's a good a good way for us to get introduced to what the content manager looks like. So let's just start off by creating a blank collection. And what I did here, I went to the top of the top bar here next to our add panel, where we would add all of our different UI elements to the page. So you see some familiar things like text or repeaters. Um, you also have uh, images and paragraphs. But let's go over to the right here to our content manager and create a new collection just for fun. And this is going to be our, uh, our data model. So let's say courses, data model. Cool. <clears throat> so now we have this data model for all of our, our, our courses that we're gonna be uh, releasing here on the website that you saw on our live site, right? So with our courses, we have a few different fields that we wanna add and our data model allows us to just structure what fields that we want. So right here inside the content manager, we start with our default field, which is title. And we could use that as the name of the actual uh, course that we have. And we'll go here to the add button and let's add another one for the level. 
So right now, remember, we're just structuring how things are. We're not adding any content uh, to to this uh, to the content manager at the moment. We're just uh, putting together the field so we have a, a big idea, a bigger picture of what we're trying to put together. So we have the level. We're going to need the image as well. So let's have the image uh, for, for what it is. And make sure that when you have uh, these different fields that you're using, that you choose the appropriate field type depending on what that uh, that item or that piece of content is. So for this example, we have, uh, we're naming this image. So let's change the field type to image. And we'll save. And then we also do have another uh, another field for the difficulty image. So we had those courses that were there and our courses had, if you go down to the bottom, our courses have different images depending on the difficulty. So we have different images for intermediate, beginners, even for the advanced. So let's add another field for the image of the, uh, of the level. So level image, and let's add a text. Save, I mean, uh, add image. And then let's see what other fields that we would like to add. We also have another field here for like the URL if you want to go straight to this page. And we'll dive into that a little bit more once we get to dynamic pages. Uh, so for now, this should be good just for us to structure uh, what it looks like. And let's go and create another data model here for our schedule meeting. So the scheduling meeting comes here from uh, this bottom part here. And this is where we'll be sending this same data that we're collecting from a user that's going to be putting their name, their phone number, and their email, and sending it straight to our, our, our content collection. So let's go and create another data model for us just for example purposes. So say schedule data model. And for this uh, data model, we're just add three fields. So we'll start with the title default field and we'll leave that as the name. And that'll be the name that will connect this field to the name of whoever's scheduling this meeting as. And you can always go into the properties and change the field name of what you like. Just keep in mind that the title field stays default to the field title. So I can always come here and type in name if I'd like, but just see, as you see, all the other field, the field key hasn't changed and the field type you can uh, always stays the same as text. Um, so for now, let's just say that as name. And we also have the phone number. And phone number will leave here as text, even though there is a number, um, a number uh, field type. And the reason why we'll leave it as text is just because sometimes when you uh, insert a string, uh, especially for a phone number from uh, different countries, you might have some other characters in there that don't qualify as numbers. And then lastly, we'll have another field here for the email. So I didn't have to change the field type for any of these. We're just collecting text here. Great. So now that we have our data models all set and ready to go, um, let's talk about some of the permissions and uh, what's available to work with uh, some of these uh, for some of these uh, content collections. So we have, um, if we go out here to our content manager again, we have our data models. And if we go into the settings of our data models, we'll see what is this collection for? Right now, a default set to site content. And what site content allows you to do, it allows anyone to view the content from the collection, right? So anyone that visits our site can go and see exactly what we're trying to display on, the, on a certain UI element. We also have another permission here for form submission. So this would be perfect for our scheduling a meeting that we have on the bottom of our page. Anyone can submit data to this collection. And you can also set a custom, uh, a, a custom setting to how you want the form submissions and the site content to be viewed on this as well if you scroll to the bottom. And then we also do have some other permissions here for site members. So if you only want the, uh, the content to be seen for members only or for uh, the content to be only sent from members, you can use the members only form submission. But for something like schedule a meeting, we would use for the form submission. But since this is just a data model, let's dive into the real thing um, and actually see what this content collection looks like for courses and scheduling a meeting. So again, I just go to the top bar, right across right across from the uh, ad panel, 
and we'll go to content manager. And we'll leave our data models here since we already know how we want to structure it. And we'll go here to create a new collection. And we're going to start off with the choruses and show you how to display those choruses uh, to, uh, um, to the repeater or to other UI elements you have on the page. So now we're, we're stepping into how to create a collection. And uh, you don't need to um, uh, have any other ex uh, extra steps. Everything is right in front of you. So we have our courses, and we'll just name it courses, simply like that. And we'll leave the permissions as site content. And we'll click Create Collection. So we'll wait a few seconds. And there we go. We have our collection already created. So you might have noticed something a bit different here in this collection compared to how we were creating a bare bones collection for the data model. There's already content in here. So one of the features of the content manager is that it also saves um, any content collection that you have deleted as a backup for up to seven days. So before we started this webinar, I actually had this uh, courses um, uh, content collection deleted. But because we have that seven days to restore our collections, as long as you name the collection the same way, the same name, just like how I did, you'll get the same content that you had saved beforehand. And you can start off where you left, where you left off. Great. So now we're going to dive in a little bit more to see what the content manager has to offer now that we've created our content collection. So uh, you'll see here inside the content manager, it's just a simple table. Looks like something that you might have used in Excel or in uh, Microsoft Word. Um, and we have fields here for all of our different items that we uh, put together in our data model, right? So we have our image for what the, uh, the chorus is, just to you know, change, switch it up and give it some style. We have the title, which is the name of the course. So we have UX and mobile, typography, tap targets, product design, you name it. Excuse me. And we also do have the level right here, which is another text field, the level images. And then you see some links here. And we'll get to these a little bit later once we dive into uh, dynamic pages. But you get the point. We have all of our fields here that we, uh, that we put together in our data model, plus a few additional ones. So the content manager uh, uh, has a lot of different features inside of it just to get you started to help you manage how your data is and how, what, how it displays to you on the back end. So if I go here to sort, I can add a new sort if I'm looking for something specifically um, in my collection. So I can sort by the title and I can switch the sort to from A to Z to maybe Z to A. So let's add our sort and we'll see the difference between uh, what we just saw. So now it'd be, uh, now it's in a backwards uh, reverse alphabetical order. And I can add a different sort. You can add many different sorts and you can change the sort by the field, which would be the columns here, the field or the columns of uh, each one that you have. And if I want to filter, I can also filter on the back end as well. So if I want to filter by uh, let's say the choruses again, the title, which would be the name of the choruses. I can choose uh, from many different options from contains, does not contain, is, is not. And this is all depending on the string, the, the text, the words that are there. And if I'm looking to sort something, uh, let's say for UX and mobile, and I want to see all things that have UX and mobile, I'll just add my filter and I'll only see UX and mobile. Right, so there's a lot of different features here just to help you manage your content uh, so that you can easily find what you need. And there's also a search button. So if, there, if you have a really big collection, um, you'll be able to search for those keywords and find exactly what you'd like. You can always go back here and delete your sorts and your filters so that you can go and bring your collection back to normal again. And if you do have some existing collections that uh, existing data that you want to show or existing content that you want to show, you can use this ellipses here to import a CSV or a flat file so that you can import it here and have it on your actual Editor X site. You can export the CSV that you have here as well 
uh, so that if you have uh, an existing Excel sheet or Google Sheets uh, somewhere that you want to bring this content to, you can also export CSV by clicking this button. Joshua, can I interrupt you with a question? Absolutely. Great. We just have uh, one that says, can you have it set up so that the form submissions can automatically populate content on the website? Yes. Yeah, so, so if you, um, if you use, uh, once we dive into data sets, we'll uh, dive into the different modes that you can use. So we have read only, write only, read and write only. So as long as you set the right setting there, you'll be able to display that same content that you're submitting um, into your form if you'd like. Thank you. Yep. Um, so, and then also back to the content manager here. So we also do have a f uh, one other feature that I'd like to highlight. Uh, and this is the difference between sandbox and live mode. So right now, currently we're in sandbox mode. Uh, and what sandbox is, is just the uh, version that we see on the site that we're editing. So as we're adding different things to our collections or adding new collections or adding new content, we'll only see this in sandbox. And you'll have to then sync this to the live version, which will help manage the content that, that appears on the published website that you've already deployed to the web. And you already know from using uh, core, um, from using Editor X that you can easily publish um, your, your sites with the click of a button. Uh, so as long as these two things are synced, your, your content will be aligned from what you're testing out on your site that you're creating to what your users are seeing on the front end. And you'll just go here to sync to live. So now we have our, now we've went over the content manager and we have our courses collection already created. Let's go into supercharging our repeaters um, and uh, displaying the dynamic content that we have stored in this content collection. So let's close out this content manager panel on the side and we'll scroll down to our repeater. So uh, the way to find our repeater, we'll go here to the add panel and we will go over here to, let's see, our layouting tools or compositions. Let's see. Quick add. And we have our repeaters right here. So we'll go over to quick add and we'll go to repeaters. And you can just easily drag and drop this to the page and get going with a repeater. And uh, we'll delete this repeater for now since we already have one on the page currently. But I'm just showing you where to find these things really quickly. And just also keep in mind when you drag and drop a repeater on the page, a repeater is a list or a grid of different items that you're listing. So, and it keeps the same design concept for each, each, uh, each item. Sometimes I like to call them cards. So if I scroll, if I bring this over here, all the other repeaters will follow that same design as I'm moving things around. So this is great for our dynamic content because then everything will follow the same design and I won't have to go back and change and tweak little things. Um, this is dynamic content that we're working with. Joshua, I'm just going to interrupt you one second to address Absolutely. everybody. Um, I, I know lots of you are asking questions and if the team are not answering you live right now, don't worry, we're collecting all of your questions and we will get to them in the Q&A at the end. So don't panic if we don't answer you right now. Thanks, Joshua. Yep. So we have our repeater here. And our repeater, we're going to uh, start by supercharging it uh, by connecting it to data. So there's a few uh, other elements that we have to add to our page here. So to get started with uh, our repeater, we notice once we click in the middle here or uh, like on the top on the corner here, we want to select the entire repeater that we have. Uh, let's go over to our, our, our menu here on the top. So we have manage items, change layout, and connect to data. So usually like manage, managing your items, you'll be able to go in here and select each item in your repeater. So one, two, and three, and then add content to it statically. So we want to enhance this so we don't have to keep going into each item and that's just very meticulous. So how about we just go and connect it to data and make this way easier for ourselves. So as I go here to connect to data, I'll start by creating a data set. And the data set acts as a bridge between our UI element to our content collection. 
right? So now we're, or vice versa. So now we're bringing that content that we have from our data set to our repeater or any UI element. And as I mentioned beforehand, our data set does allow us to add different modes, but let's see what it looks like before we start talking about it. So we'll go over here and we'll choose a collection. So remember, I told you that the data set acts as a bridge between our content collection to our UI elements here. So we'll choose the content collection that we're trying to work with here. So we'll choose choruses. And automatically, this gives us a name for data set, for the data set. And we can always edit it if you'd like, but it gives us a good default name here for course data sets because it's straight to the point. So let's create. And you might have noticed that we get this little UI element here on our page. And let me just bring it up here. And this is the data set. Uh, so don't worry, the data set won't show up on your editor. The data set itself actually is an invisible UI element just for you to manage uh, this bridge between the content collection and this UI element. So let's go over here to settings on our data set. So once we select it, we'll click settings. And we'll see that the chorus, uh, the, connect, the collection is connected to the choruses, right? So we have a few different, um, different sections here. So now we've already connected to the chorus collection. We have the data set name that's already set in default and we have our modes. So currently right now, by default, it's set to read only. So read only allows us to display the content from the collection. And remember that the content, the collection that we had for choruses, the permission is that anyone can see this content. So now we have set the mode of the data set so that, um, so that this, this, um, this content that we have in our collection will still be able to be shown read, uh, using read only. There are some other modes as well that we'll be using today. Uh, we also have write only, and this is for submitting content to a collection. So that's what we'll use when we want to submit uh, that schedule a meeting to our schedule meeting collection that we'll be creating in a bit. And then someone asked about um, being able to see that content that's being submitted to a collection. You can also use our mode for read and write, and that will help you modify uh, content that's in the collection, and then you'll be able to display it. Just keep in mind that um, you'll have to set some permissions um, when you're building the, the collection uh, using custom the custom use, just so you can uh, you know adjust to how you want your content to be collected or shown. And Joshua, just a small interruption uh, question here: Can you only connect data like this to a repeater, or are there other elements on the front end that can be connected to a database? Yeah. So there are, are there are lots of other elements that you can uh, connect um, on the front end here to, uh, to your uh, collection. Uh, so the repeater is really just a combination of a bunch of different UI elements that, that we have already. So you see that we already have an image here. We have some text. Uh, we even have uh, another image here and even a button, right? So it's a combination of all the different ones. And as we connect this, uh, the 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 UI elements to our content collection, you'll see how we're choosing each uh, element that we have inside of a repeater and connecting it to a field that has the appropriate field type depending on what the UI element is. So if it's an image, we wanna connect it to the a field that has an image field. If it's a text, we wanna make sure that we're connecting it to a field that is of, of a text field type. And um, there's lots of different UI elements that you can see here from the ad panel. So you can keep, go here from the quick ad, you can uh, connect uh, text, if I had another text here that I just dragged and dropped, um, that ne necessarily isn't the repeater. So let me just go back and uh, take this out. And I wanted to connect text. I can also have this text element here, connect to data, choose my course data sets already set by default and connect my text to something. So you can also play around with that. Um, and if you wanted to like do something else with an API, um, you can also do that with some of our development tools as well uh, by using Corvid and turning on dev mode. So there's lots of different ways to display data on your page. But let's dive back into our repeater again, and we'll go over our connecting to data. So once that we've already uh, connected our data set to um, the collection that we needed, we now have all of our different components that we have inside a repeater. So I just mentioned them as elements. Um, they can also be mentioned as components as well. So our components here are the image, the text for the title, 
the uh, image here for the difficulty of the chorus, and then also the chorus name, which is a text and a button. So let's go here to image. So we'll go here to image right here, and we'll click the arrow. And we'll see that we're still connected to the chorus data set. And the image source connects to, let's change this image source connecting to the image. So you notice something here. We have a bunch of different idle fields, but we have some fields that are highlighted. So let's just click image here because this is the same field that we had for the actual image of the course itself. And for anyone that has any like site uh, um, problems with site, um, or if you have any uh, uh, visitors to your site that want uh, to, for some things for accessibility, or maybe they're using a browser that's not supporting something, um, we can also go here to our alt text. Um, so we're able to actually uh, see this if the image doesn't show up. And we'll change that alt text to the name of the course itself. And these other, uh, these other options here, you can leave them blank. Um, you can set them up to whatever fields that you like. Uh, for right now, we're not gonna approach these. We have tooltip uh, connects to, you can connect that to something else. And we also have links that you can connect to a dynamic page, which I mentioned we'll talk about later. Um, and you can add different fields to your collection that collect URLs. So let's go back here. And text, which would be the text of the title that's here. And this is why naming conventions are really important when you're putting together your collections so you don't get confused um, as to what you're actually uh, working with. So if I go back here to text again, I just remember from my collection that this is the text of the actual uh, chorus itself. You could set this to chorus title or chorus text, whatever you like to name it. So leave that as title. And we'll go back to all, co all connections. So we don't have to keep clicking out. We'll just go here to all connections. And we have another text field here that will take up this text. And this will be where we'll put the uh, name of, of the difficulty actually of the course itself. So let's connect this text field over to the, uh, let's see, we'll scroll down and we'll change this to the level. Back to all, all connections. And then we have another image here. And this image is for our smaller image. And this image is going to be for the image of our level. So remember how I showed you each level difficulty has a different uh, image associated with it. Let's change it to that. And we'll give the alt text the name of the level itself. So that in case the image doesn't show, it will actually just show the level of the difficulty. Scrolling back up to our, uh, our data set here, we have also have vector art. Uh, we don't necessarily have anything we need to connect to vector art at the moment. And again, like you don't have to connect every single field that you have here, but it's great to show you that you have the option and you're not locked in. And we also have our button, which changes a few things. Our button here is going to be connected to our data set as well and our data in our, our, in our content collection. So there might not be a actual field for something for a button, but the button has an action um, that we'll be able to use. So our action could be to go to the dynamic page that we'll create towards the end or to either to the all page or to the title page. And we'll learn about those in a bit. But for now, let's set it to the title page because the title page will allow us to click um, and navigate to the individual page that we'll have created for each course. Great, so now that our repeater is set and ready to go and we used no code to get this going, Let's test it out in preview and see what it looks like. Let's go over here to preview mode. And there we go. No code at all. And we have our repeater already populated with all of our courses. Great. Thanks, Joshua. Can you also just give those handles a squeeze so we see the responsive behavior? Absolutely. This layout too. So as I squeeze these a little bit, you'll see them down to tablet size as well, and even in mobile. And let's go look what the repeaters look like. And Editor X is great for all this responsive design. And let's back to tablet size, and I'll show you what that looks like as well. Actually, let me just go right here to our tablet size. And if I scroll up, that's how our repeater looks. Nice.
Nice. And we just had a question now about how to how to view the content without going to the live site. It's it's like this in preview mode. Whoever asked yeah. that question, just use preview. Just I, I would use preview mode uh, for sure. Um, so you know, definitely use preview mode, and it's definitely something that um, you know we'll just to, to look out for in the future um, of of Editor X as well. Cool. So now that we have displayed our content. Let's go and figure out how to actually submit content to a collection, right? So um, as I mentioned before, there's plenty of different UI elements for you to work with um, that can connect to data, connect to these collections that you have already. Um, and as, as you've seen before, it's pretty easy to get started. Um, there's no code involved. You don't have to be a developer to do these things. Um, and it's great for collaboration. So to get started here, how about we go and create a, um, a new collection for scheduling a meeting? So the, the same way how we built our data model beforehand, let's um, use our data model that we created. Right? We could use our data model, or we can even use the same collection again as well, um, because this was just here for, for demo purposes. But let's go back and show you again how to create a collection. So we'll use those same fields. So we have the name, the phone number, and the email address. Let's create a new collection. And we'll change the permissions as well. So let's name this schedule. Oops. A meeting. So what is this collection for? We're going to make this collection for form submissions. So anyone that visits this site, even though it's a mock site, can go here and submit to our schedule a meeting collection. So easily, we'll just go here to create a collection. Cool. So again, um, this this uh, content collection was already created beforehand. Um, you do have seven days um, after your uh, content collection has been deleted to restore it. So it's part of the, the backups that we have here. And actually, how about I show you a bit of what that looks like if I was going to delete or remove this collection. It brings up this notification saying that removing this collection will break all the pages that have any connections to it. So as I'm connecting these UI elements to data, to the data set, to our content collection, um, it will break all those connections that we have. So that bridge will be blocked off. Um, but in order to restore things, I would just recreate this collection again within seven days and uh, we'll have my, our things back to normal again. So now we have our schedule meeting collection already created with our three fields here, just for the name of the person, which would be the title field, the phone number, and the email. So now our collection is created. And the next thing to do is to create a data set. So you can create a data set here from the, um, from the course collections when you're creating something fresh. But when you want to create something for um, another data set to after you've created your first one. We'll go over here to our content manager and we'll scroll over to the side here to add content elements. So um, our content elements here, as we've seen already, we have our data set that we use. Oops, let me just go back, added that by accident. Um, and we'll add a content element for form data set. So the only difference here is that it creates a form collection and collects the data for, from your visitors. So let's use this instead. Cool. And let's see here. We have our settings. And let's change our settings to connect to the schedule of meeting content collection. And because this knows that it's a form uh, submission data set, the mode has already been set to write only, right? So automatically, if you've seen beforehand, when we created a regular data set, it was just there as read only. Now we can uh, choose write only, it'll be there as default. And if you wanted to change it, we can go back into mode and we have the freedom to do so. And if you notice that we do have a few other filters that were available on the front end for the, our regular data set that was displaying um, this content from our collection is now idle when we choose write only. So if I wanted to sort something in my front end for this course collection, I can just go here and add a filter or add a sort the same way how I did in the back end. 
but when I do write only because we're submitting data or submitting content, actually, when we're submitting content, well, these fields for the number of, that we're displaying or how we want to filter or how we want to sort will be idle because we're just submitting to our collection. So we have a few different pieces here. So we have the name, which is an input field that we have from the um, from this add panel for adding an ant element. We have another input here for the phone number and another input for the email. And then we also have a button to send this content to our collection. So you may be wondering, how come you're not using Wix forms, uh, the forms that we have here? So let's see. We also have our forms. So let's go to our inputs. We have our inputs that we had that we just drag and dropped. And then let's see if we can find our forms that we have here as well. So we have contact forms. And we have plenty of different forms that are here. And these forms can be connected to your collections. The difference here is that we want to make sure that these inputs um, are of a custom design of how we'd like things to, to, to look. Um, usually with these uh, forms that we have here from Editor X, um, these forms are already um, pre-designed pre for you to use, but now we have the freedom with the content manager to create our own look and feel of how we want things to, um, to be on the front end for our users, and we could still collect that same content and bring it to our collections. So let's go back to our data set and let's connect these uh, inputs to our uh, data set, which will speak to our content collection. So we go to settings. Oh, actually, we'll go here to each input. So first we'll start with name and we'll go here to this menu and we'll connect to data. We'll choose the schedule a meeting data set. And now all we'll have to do is connect it to the field that we want to capture this information to. So we want to capture this information and send it to the uh, title, uh, the title field that we have here. So now anytime a user types something here, their name, it will go straight to the title field. And let's move down to the next to the next input. Phone number, it's the same process. Schedule a meeting, that's the data set that we'll choose, which is connected to the schedule meeting uh, content collection. And then we'll choose phone number. And the last input field. We'll choose our data set again for schedule a meeting. And we'll choose the email. And lastly, we have the button. And again, as I mentioned, the button might not be a field that you're working with, but this button is connecting to our data set because remember, it acts as the bridge between the UI element and our content collection. So we'll connect this again to schedule a meeting and we'll fire the action of submit so that once all the content uh, of is already been filled out, we'll click submit, submit, which will fire an action to send straight to our content collection. And then we have some other options on the bottom here. We can submit a message. Uh, so we can say, add a success message. And we already have one that's here. Your content has been submitted. So we can add another one if you'd like. So let me just get rid of this here, drag this over. And we could still have the design freedom to edit some of our text. So let's go here and change the size. We could change the color. And we can display this once that message is sent. And to check if your uh, elements are connected to data, you just go here and you see that the connected data button is highlighted in blue. And you'll always be able to check uh, what elements are um, a part of, uh, of, are connected to the data set itself. So let's go here, here to preview and let's test it out to see if we're getting these form submissions. So go to preview mode. And we already have all of our courses here because we connected to the data set, which is speaking to our content collection. And let's type in our name. So I'm Joshua. Uh, let's type in 516-241-6452. It's not a real number, just typing in random. So we say Josh Alphonse 
at editor x.com and we'll send and look voila we have our content uh message that's sent here your content has been submitted and let's just go and check our content collection for scheduling meeting to see if uh all the content we just submitted is there so again we'll just go to here to the top uh to the top bar and go over to our content manager and we'll navigate to our schedule and meeting content collection. And we'll see, here's my name, my phone number and my email already submitted. So the great thing about this is not once did I code anything. Um, everything that I needed to do was right from the editor. I just connected things to our data set, created our collections and I was going on from there. There's so many different UI elements to go and choose uh, to choose from and to work with that allows you to create these uh, these uh, dynamic content driven sites. Um, and it doesn't stop there. We can even take it a step further with dynamic pages. So our dynamic pages um, will allow us to enhance um, our page or enhance our site even more so because it allows us to save time. It allows us to create uh, to use the same uh, design concepts that we've that we've been using over and over again, uh, without having to repeat that same process. And uh, dynamic pages um, are great because it gives each item its own route. Um, if you have SEO options that you're using, you can create your own SEO with it, and then also it will create its own URL for, depending on the item that you have in the content manager itself. Uh, so enough talking about it. Let's get in to see how it actually works. And when you're working with dynamic pages, just also keep in mind that most of the time when you're working with this, it's going to be for something that you're displaying, right? So make sure that you're using, that your permissions are set um, and you're using the appropriate collection to, that you're going to be using for a dynamic page. So to get started with the dynamic page, it's really easy. You just go over here to the content manager, choose the collection that you want to display, so choruses is what our main uh, display would be. We'll click the ellipses and we'll add a dynamic page. So let's click add. And we'll see, things are already changing here. So now I have um, on, my, on my site pages tab here, I have my homepage that I was just working on for all the cutting edge designs in the world and showing you all the courses. And now I have um, a new page, two new pages here. I have the all page, which will show all of our items that we have in our collection, which would be all of our courses. So if we want to display everything that we have. And then the title page, which is the individual page that each course gets. Um, and then it also keeps the same design, out, uh, design layout as well. So as you're coming in there, even if you started from blank, um, you could still have those same, from a blank uh, um, dynamic page, you can still design things how you'd like and it will never change. The way I like to think about it is if you go on, on to your favorite uh, sneaker store and um, you're displaying a shoe and you know the designs around are staying the same, but the content is changing each page you go to because you're looking at a different shoe. It's the same concept here. So let's take a look at what these dynamic pages look like by starting with the all page that displays all of our choruses. So you could still have the, the power to um, create a header here that will help you navigate to different pages um, that we have on our site. It doesn't necessarily change anything. The dynamic page just acts as another page, it acts as a singular page. So that's why it's a nice workaround uh, around the page, the, the page limits. So now we can see all of our different items that we have here in our, or, or our courses that we have inside of our, co our collection. And if we go here to read more, this button uh, will bring us already to our title page, which shows the each individual course that we have in our collection. Cool. So if we were to start from blank, um, it's really easy to do so as well. You just go back to our content manager choose the uh, collection that you want to start with and add a blank dynamic page and it will create it within a few seconds. 
And now you'll see here at the top, we still have this uh, this data set here, but this data set's a little different because we created it on a dynamic page. This is a dynamic data set. And the only difference here is that it's working with, um, it's created with a dynamic page and it's working with dynamic content that's going to be constantly updating uh, on this page, uh, depending on what we have inside of our collection. So I can still drag and drop more elements to our page here and I can get things quickly going and I can design it how I'd like. Um, so let's just go here to quick add and just quickly put together some things. So we have an image, we have a title and why not another title here to show the difficulty of our chorus? So I'm just putting together a quick design of how I'd want a dynamic page to look like from blank. And each, uh, each chorus that I have will follow the same design and the content will just change on the image, the text, and the other text that I have here as well. And because this already comes with our data set, we don't have to create a new one. Um, we could just get going from here and we'll choose the choruses item and we'll choose the title, which would be the name of our chorus. We also have this here, we'll choose the, we already have it as courses uh, item and we'll choose the image, which would be the image of our course. And then lastly, we'll have this, uh, this text here, we'll just put the difficulty or the level of our course as well. And remember, I have the design freedom here while working with a blank dynamic page to add many different elements as I'd like. It doesn't just have to be elements that are connecting to data. If you wanted to add um, some other things uh, like a container or a layouter or uh, even an iframe or a shape or something like that, you could still add, you have the, the design freedom to add as many different elements as you'd like and still connect things to data. So let's look, like, let's look at what this uh, looks like in preview mode, just to show you what it looks like. And there we go. We have the name of our chorus, we have the image of our chorus, and then also what type of level is recommended for this chorus. So that's a, that's dynamic pages. Um, and that's, that's the content manager. Uh, so there's so many uh, ways to enhance the way that you're creating websites with Editor X plus using the content manager. I definitely recommend that you guys go and dive in some more and create these content driven websites. Um, while using what you learned here today. Um, there's lots of different resources to, to check out as well and uh, videos on our YouTube on, on YouTube as well to look at. Great. Thank you so much, Joshua. That was that was amazing. And I, I think we have time to move on uh, now to the Q&A, please. We have lots of people who are bringing up questions. Are you all right if I fire a few questions at you? Absolutely. Yes, great. Um, so b before I do, I have one update I wanted to mention to you guys that um, we also have some new, it was released, uh, it's, it's coming soon, sorry, uh, new coming soon, some responsive uh, templates for creating these dynamic pages. So you don't have to build the whole structure from scratch. Um, uh, soon you'll be able to, very soon, in fact, you'll be able to uh, choose a template, for example, like a team template uh, or, or something like that connected to, with, it's connected to a collection and display it uh, on your front end using a template. So that will save you a lot of work. Um, so watch this space. It's on our coming soon page, soon to be moved to our updates and releases, I believe. Um, okay, so I'm going to move over to the Q&A. And I'd also love to invite uh, Tal, Alex, Gidrius, uh, and Sebi um, from the from the product uh, team to join us because uh, I'm going to be firing some questions at you, if that's all right. Okay. So the first one. Um, okay, I think this is for you, Joshua. Um, you mentioned that after seven days, um, the columns get completely deleted. Uh, so they're saved there for seven days and then they get deleted. So the question is after eight days, we can recreate the same column with the same ID and it will be empty brand new. Is that right? Yeah, so you have up to seven days to restore uh, that collection that you created. So after that seventh day, then um, you'll be able to create uh, something with that same name and it will be blank. Um, and we won't have that same data that's there. Great, thank mm -hmm. you. And uh, the next one, uh, Gidrius, this one is for you. Um, it's about the strength of our databases. Um, for example, can you handle thousands of rows of content easily? How is that? Gidris, are you there? 
Yeah, uh, thank oh. you for the question. Yes. So uh, we have customers that have tens of thousands of dynamic pages and they seem to be working just fine. Uh, we're also uh, looking into releasing some other features that will allow you to tune the performance and, and the settings of the collections a bit more. So definitely, yes. Great. Uh, thank you. I hope that answers you. And uh, a question here, Joshua, this is for you. Um, somebody's confirming, and I think incorrectly, um, that images cannot be exported or imported into the database. You can, right? Um, if you have it inside of a CSV, um, you should, you know, if you have an image there, you should be able to import and export. Um, and even if you even if you have an image that you have that you would like to import and export, you can also use something like a URL and uh, use some of our development uh, tools as well uh, to get going with that. Um, but I believe you should still be able to import uh, those files from the CSV. Cool. Thank you. Another one, Kedrius. I, I you sort of answered it in your previous question, but people are asking if there's a limit for the number of dynamic pages, not just the number of rows, but the number of pages. I know um, Joshua mentioned a hundred page limit, but that doesn't apply to dynamic pages. No, so it right? doesn't apply to the dynamic pages. You can have as many item pages as you want. Uh, one thing to note that the whole database uh, with all the collections are subject to data size limitations. By, de by default, it's 10 gigabytes. Uh, but if you get an error, in, you know, in, in the con manager saying that you're out of data, you can feel free to contact with support and we'll happily increase that limit for you. It's just so we, uh, you know, prevent abuse of some unfair use. Great, thank you. Um, uh, another question, this one, I think, uh, Joshua, it's for you. Um, can you link databases with blog elements? Mm -hmm. um, I don't believe that the blog uh, has, uh, any elements that you can connect to. But the great thing about the content manager is that you can still create a custom experience. Just how we created those custom forms uh, for scheduling a meeting, you could still use the content manager and create a custom type of blog experience and have and connect those different elements depending on how you design it uh, to, to create that. But I don't believe that the blog vertical um, has uh, connected data abilities. Okay, and anyone else from product want to jump in or correct that? That's yeah, so, so you can use blogging in, ex, uh, in some senses, like you can uh, connect uh, some content to repeaters and you can have different like front page layout of your blog posts and so on. So the only thing that we don't have today is ability to natively bind the co content of the blog. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can sort of work around it by, having, by using the regular blog page, uh, keeping the blog content, hiding all of the other blog elements and then just using data binding to display the rest. So it yeah. can be done with, with, with a bit of a workaround today. Yeah, just okay. Something that we hope to address in the future, uh, but today it, it requires a bit extra work compared to everything else. Yeah, it's cool to use some of the skills that you've learned today and combine it with that same vertical um, to create that custom, more of a custom enhanced experience with your blog. Great, thank, thank you both. Um, and a, a slightly unrelated question, but very related to Editor X here. Um, how do I know if my website is responsive and optimized for all devices? Sebi, I think you can take this one. Hey everyone, I'm uh, Sebi, the product manager for Editor X. Um, so it's a great question. Uh, so basically Editor X by default, we start off with uh, three, three breakpoints. What is a breakpoint? A breakpoint is basically we're getting uh, ranges of widths of a screen size basically. And we defined it, you know, we have one for desktop, for tablet, for mobile. Um, and you can actually like resize the canvas to go between each one. Um, I don't know, Josh, if you if you can show us uh, kind of the example of resizing uh, the canvas from the sides uh, between the different breakpoints so we can see how, how you can see each individual, you know, screen size. Uh, so you can pretty much see beforehand and if you see anything that you want to adjust on mobile or tablet you can go ahead and do that and also you can adjust these numbers these are not fixed numbers you know we just basically put uh the most common uh you know the the industry standards uh but everyone has their own you can add additional breakpoints as well to your uh, design yeah great thank you um next one alex uh, i'm gonna direct th this one to you um 
how do I mix presenting different medias like sound and pictures and videos? Um, for example, this, this uh, creator has a section for company and media where there are sometimes podcasts, sometimes videos and sometimes articles. Is this possible? Hi, sorry. <laughs> Uh, so basically, you need to check out the media gallery type. There is no problem to, there is something you can do it, basically. Uh, it allows to store different types of media and uh, displaying it in the gallery. Great. Thank you. Um, I, I, I'll show it's, you what it looks like as well. Oh, awesome. That would be great. So if you just go and like add a, if you want to add a different field type, there's like plenty of different field types that you'll be able to use. So again, images and uh, videos, audio, uh, there's lots of different field types that you could use uh, to connect to some different UI elements. Great, thank you. Um, next one, uh, Gidrius, this, one, this one's for you. Um, can the content on the database be automated? For example, if I have a database that contains 10 quotes and I'd like to display one quote a day, can I automate that process? Yeah, so of course you can, but it will uh, require using Corvid and writing a bit of code to do that. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I, I'm aware that we're a little bit out of time, so I'm going to answer a couple more and then tell if I'm right in this, we're, these guys, these all these experts will stay online in this chat if you want to continue answering, uh, asking questions, they'll be available to type you and answer you. Um, for a little while after the webinar. So I'll ask a couple more. And if you have to dash, um, then thank you, thank you for joining. Um, uh, so a quick question here, uh, Joshua, um, how do you upload images to a collection? I believe you covered it. Can you just yeah. do us a quick, show it again? Yeah, sure. So if I want to upload a, an image to a collection, I'll just go here and choose a collection that I would like. So I'll start with choruses. And if I want to upload something, uh, let's create a new row for a new course. And since this um, this field type is already an image, so remember if I go and added a new field um, and I added this new field for the field type to be image, now I can add any image that I'd like. So we'll use the one that's already existing. And we'll just go here to add an image that's there on our new row. And it'll bring up the uh, media gallery and I'll be able to upload all these different images that I have that I upload from my uh, from my computer or from other resources like uh, Google Drive, Instagram, or I can also use the Wix Media as well to upload an image um, that I'd like. So if I wanna use this uh, holding a book, I could just add an item. And now that book is there and I can name this uh, book reading class. Um, and then I can go forward and fill out the rest. So it's really easy to get started with an image. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, and th this one I think is, is relevant to lots of you uh, who are working with teams and clients. Uh, Gidrius, I, I think I'll ask you, is it possible um, with databases and re repeaters like this um, to lock the front end design and only let people touch the database? I think the designers on my team do this to me all the time because I'm a content writer. Um, so. Yeah, so <laughs> it's not possible today, but to oh. give a sneak peek, it's something that is uh, just going to be available soon. Okay, coming soon. The, the designers will be excited about it. Um, and uh, I guess I'll, I'll fire one more out here and then we'll switch to chat. Um, uh, can I have several different layouts for dynamic pages, each showing a different data set from one and the same content collection? Uh, Gidrius, this one might be for you as well. Yeah, sure. So you can have uh, as many different layouts and as many different pages from the same collection or different collections as you want. Amazing, um, thank you. I'm, I'm gonna just uh, wrap up and sum up the, the live uh, webinar uh, session here um, before we move into a, um, a, a chat, just to say thank you so much for coming. Um, I, I was really excited to see you all here and asking so many great questions. It looks like you're really diving into Editor X and that makes me very excited. Um, and I know that there was a lot to take in there. So uh, as I said before, this webinar was recorded. Um, Joshua gave you so much information. So feel free to watch him back, pause him, replay, try it yourself. Um, it, it, you'll find it on uh, from our homepage, um, editorx.com slash academy slash webinars. Uh, you'll be able to find uh, the recording. It's not up there yet because it's just recording now, but it will be there soon. Uh, and also this is just part one. 
there's another um, part to this uh, webinar where we'll also dive much more into the form builder um, and more in about user generated content and about URL structuring. Uh, so we'll get much deeper into it. Um, so do stay tuned uh, for that one. We'll, we'll announce it soon.